Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello and welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. Today we are talking about homeopathy, but just as introduction to homeopathy. If it's if this is something you have never heard of, you are not alone. <laughs> um, but if you've been listening to me for any length of time, you may have heard me mention it and you may be wondering what the heck it is. And I have to say it's it's both easy to explain and difficult to explain. <laughs> um, I started doing some research. This is actually something fairly new to me as well, but I wanted to break it down into like as simple as I can make it. And I did a bunch of research and the simplest I could find was this paper written by Larry Bernstein or Bernstein. I'm not sure. I don't know him personally. VMD, which I did look up and that is a DVM, but it's like the Latin version of it. So he's a veterinary medical doctor. And the most simple explanation I can think for homeopathy is that it's energy medicine. Now, why are we even talking about homeopathy? Let's, let's start there because we just finished up a whole month of holistic healthcare and holistic modalities for healthcare. Now there are a lot of holistic modalities. We didn't cover them all, but I kind of wanted to bridge (laughs) from, you know, what we know traditionally in allopathic medicine, traditional Western medicine, and kind of bridge that over to homeopathy and that, that bridge being holistic medicine. Now I, again, homeopathy, homeopathy, Ooh, if I could talk homeopathy is relatively new to me. I only started learning about it. Gosh, maybe a little more than a year ago. And Dr. Will Falconer is the veterinarian who I was following, who introduced me to homeopathy. And he uses, a, well, he uses a lot of forms of homeopathy. He actually learned from Dr. Richard Pitcairn, who is very famous in veterinary medicine. He's, while he is certainly not the father of homeopathy, he is often referred to as the father of veterinary homeopathy. Um, him and his wife have numerous books out, but there is one specifically on homeopathy raising animals naturally and they are i think they're on their fifth version of it right now if if i'm not mistaken so they keep updating it but so you may have heard you may have heard of richard richard pitcairn dr richard pitcairn veterinary homeopathy is just like human homeopathy except of course our animals can't verbally speak to us in the same way that humans speak to each other, right? So we have to rely a little bit more. Actually, in my opinion, homeopathy may be even more effective um, because we are just looking at the symptoms. But in in other instances, there may be symptoms that we we can't see. So, you know, it's 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 a toss up, right? You you may talk to a homeopathic veterinarian saying, oh yeah, you know, it's so much better. And you may talk to another one saying, well, there's still a lot that we 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 can't ascertain from our animals because they can't, you know, verbalize uh, to us in in a language we understand. We're not the same species. But I I did I highlighted a few things on this this um I want to call it a paper. It's really probably not a paper, but uh, Dr. Veterinary Medical Doctor Larry Bernstein, uh, naturalholistic.com is his website. This was actually written back in 2012, but 
like a broad overview, homeopathy is energy medicine. So homeopathy is broadly defined. I'm going to, I'm going to quote a few things from this paper and I will link it, um, in the video version of the podcast. We can broadly define homeopathy as the treatment of disease with minute quantities of substances to trigger the body's intelligence to fight the disease on its own. So what's really interesting is that allopathic medicine, the, the type of medicine that we currently use in the United States that we are very accustomed to now, the, you know, this is my symptom, let's get rid of it kind of um, very, it's very reactive medicine, right? Something happens and we react to it. So we, we come down with some sort of symptom or an array of symptoms and we attack those symptoms. That is very unintuitive, right? It really does not provide any room for the idea, the fact that our bodies have natural healing abilities. Now, no, we're not going to regenerate an arm if we have an arm chopped off, right? That's kind of gruesome. I apologize. No, that's not going to happen. But our bodies do have ways of healing itself. If you think back to, you know, two, three hundred years ago, we didn't have all this modern medicine. And yes, yes, lifespans were much shorter. But if you think about all of the things that our bodies naturally can, can fight against. In fact, recently I had a bit of an earache and I don't normally think a whole lot of that as long as it goes away within a day or two, but it had been going on for like four days. And I'm like, mm, I just, no, it hurts. I started doing some research, which I had never done before because I don't even remember the last time I had an earache. And lo and behold, even, even traditional allopathic medicine is saying most earaches go away on their own. What does that tell you? That the body is healing itself, right? We have a symptom dumb. My ear was hurting, telling me something's not right in my body. And yet my body healed itself. I didn't have to, I didn't need to do anything. Now I could have done something. Um, not much, <laughs> right? Not a whole lot going on unless, you know, if my earache had, ex had been excruciating or I may have gone to see a doctor. I don't know. But the body has a way of being able to heal itself. Now, yeah, I mean, there are, if you think about a scab, right? If you get a cut or a scrape, your body is going to send a bunch of blood there. It's going to scab over and your skin cells are going to regenerate and regrow. That scab is going to fall off. You're going to wind up with brand new skin in that area. Of course, if it's something like a stab wound or a gunshot wound, of course, I'm thinking of us um, as humans, then yeah, that may not go over as well. We're doing a lot more internal damage, but of course, that's that's on a much grander scale. That's much, much more difficult. That's that's uh, much more damaging to the body. But if you if you really think about it, our bodies do have a way of being able to heal themselves. Allopathic medicine traditional uh, uh, Western medicine is the only, I mean, in history, in the entirety of history, like we are the only ones who are now looking and saying, oh, you're ridiculous if you think that, you know, holistic remedies work. You're ridiculous if you think the body can heal itself. No. Like, how did we get to this point? I don't know, but I'm getting off on a tangent here. Let me get back to homeopathy. <laughs> now, before I go any further, I do want to just interject, especially for anybody who may be listening, listening to this who hasn't listened to any of my podcasts or watched any of my videos in the past. I am not against allopathic medicine. There is a time and a place for it. Believe you me, I am here for it, okay? Integrative medicine for me is where it's at because... The one thing that allopathic medicine is exceptional at, right, is reacting. So when we have traumatic events, and of course, I'm thinking for humans because that's, you know, where, where our minds initially go. 
a car accident, right? Stabbing, gunshot wound. Yes, we want quick emergency react, react and save a life, right? Same holds true with our pets, right? A dog fight breaks out or your cat falls from a roof, right? We want quick, right? Quick, quick, quick. Let's react to this hurry. Yeah. Okay. We, and, and sometimes we need surgeries and yes, sometimes we need antibiotics, traditional veterinary medicine, allopathic medicine. Yes, there is a time and a place for it. Now that I said that, let's get back to homeopathy because it is so incredibly interesting to me. The more I learn, the more I realize I, the more I don't know, right? <laughs> because there is, there is a wealth of knowledge and information out there that, you know, humans have known for centuries. And you know what? That knowledge isn't gaining anybody any money right now. I always say, so many people always say, follow the money, right? Follow the money, you'll find people's motivation. In fact, right now, there is a push in the United States as of the recording of this video. Um, we are in the big first quarter 2022. I think last year, year, maybe 2021, it came back up um, in, into Congress. Pharmaceutical companies want to ban homeopathic medicine. Um, guess what? Homeopathic medicine is all natural. Pharmace pharmaceutical companies cannot trademark it. They cannot patent it. It's all natural. So they're not making any money on it. And so, of course, they want to ban it. I personally think we should have the right to choose um, whether you believe in homeopathic medicine, whether you do not believe in it, none of that matters. We should have the right to choose. Um, so no, I, I yeah, if, if, if you happen to be listening to this around the time the podcast actually comes out, or even later on, look into it because it may, may not pass and it may come up again later on. We want to make sure we stay on top of this. We want to make sure that we have the right to choose um, and that pharmaceutical companies do not leverage their, their billions and billions and probably trillions of dollars um, and then lobbying and all of, the, all of these things to outlaw homeopathic medicine because some people rely on it. And, and I think when you get to the point where you are actively seeking out a lot of people, a lot of people, when they get to the point of actively seeking out um, integrative medicine, holistic medicine, homeopathic medicine, they are at a loss, right? They have reached the end of what traditional med medicine allows, and they're being told there's nothing more we can do. There is something more we can do. They just aren't going to be able to make money on it, and they don't, some people don't, a lot of people don't even know about it because they're not teaching it anymore. So, Here's, let me, let me get back to homeopathy. Homeopathy realizes that symptoms are merely an expression of the underlying disease and not the disease itself. So when we think about the body and we think about symptoms, so our body should remain in, ideally, in homeostasis, right? Meaning everything is in alignment, everything is functioning properly, we're 100%, right? That's the ideal situation. In homeopathy, this is called the vital force. And what we know is that some of the things that can wreak havoc on our bodies, that can wreak havoc on our vital force are poor nutrition, toxins, vaccines, allopathic medications. When was the last time you looked at the side effects of that pharmaceutical that you're taking, right? Pollution, radiation, emotional upheaval, stress, all of these things put our body, our vital force out of homeostasis. And the result of that are what we call symptoms. Now, again, this is an overview of homeopathy, so I'm not going to get too detailed into how it works and the levels uh, because it, it actually, the, the understanding with homeopathy is that it works from the outside in. So when you're dealing with something external, like the skin, we are more than likely working, we're dealing with something that hasn't gotten too 
far. It hasn't progressed too far when we get, when it gets internal, when it's affecting your organs, when you're, it's affecting your heart, it's progressing more when it's affecting our emotions and our mental well being. it's progressing more when it's a, when we get cancer, that's it's, it's super progressed, right? So I'm not going to get too much in detail on that with homeopathy, because again, I want this to be kind of a broad overview and broader understanding. But if you really think about it, stop and think about it. Traditional medicine chases symptoms, meaning that, and they suppress symptoms. Like the the goal in allopathic medicine and traditional medicine is to suppress symptoms, though they call it curing them. And that is actually one of the most dangerous things we can be doing, which is very, very likely why we are seeing such an epidemic in the United States, for one, of so much disease and suffering. Like, and this is also why we're seeing so much disease and suffering in our animals. Like almost one in two dogs at this point are getting cancer in their lifetimes. Why is this? Because we are constantly treating, suppressing symptoms. These symptoms are valuable information. They tell us that our body is out of homeostasis. Our vital force is out of homeostasis. And we need to help our bodies to return to homeostasis, not suppress the symptoms. Because what happens when we suppress the symptoms is that our body says, okay, I can't do that. Well, let me find another way to express that I am not functioning properly. And oftentimes that is increasing in severity. Sometimes the same symptom can come back even stronger. This is very, very true in our dogs with allergies and itchy skin. Um, But a lot of times it can also progress and go further internally, which is not good, by the way. It's really, really not good and why we're seeing so much disease in our country right now, in my opinion, of course. (laughs) So Dr. Larry Bernstein Uh, on symptoms, he says, it is crucial to remember that every one of the symptoms is an expression of the imbalance of the vital force as it tries to compensate for the underlying chronic disease state. Dr. Herring taught us that the body heals from the inside out and the top down. This means that a tumor or abscess on an internal organ is more severe situation than a rash on the skin since one is exterior and one is interior. That's kind of what I was just talking about. In allopathic medicine, a symptom is usually thought of as the patient's real disease, and the goal is to hold back, decrease, or eliminate this symptom, right? That's what we were just talking about. This is often done without addressing the underlying cause. How many times have I I talked to you guys about addressing the underlying cause? Of course, I'm not here to say I'm better or smarter than you. I'm here to learn, share, and grow, right? Like if I learn something and it is of value, I am, I want to share it with you because it is of value to you as well as a pet parent. Modern medicine feels in most cases that the elimination of the symptom is the same as elimination of the disease. However, this is so not true as we were just talking about. So how can homeopathy help in these instances? when we have symptoms, right? Symptoms are telling us something. Something is not right in the body. Homeopathic remedies are ultra dilute preparations of common, sometimes toxic substances. They are so dilute that they have very little or none of the original item in them. The important thing is that they retain the imprint or frequency of the original substance in a more energetic form and work on a deep energy related level. So this is why I was saying that homeopathy, like the, the, you know, 10,000 foot view is that it's energy medicine. Okay. What we know about these dilutions, what we have found, these ultra dilute remedies, as they're called in homeopathy, can actually stimulate the body to initiate its own healing process. How cool is that? So Dr. Hanneman, back in the 1700s, he is the father of homeopathy. He found that substances or remedies 
in minute doses can stimulate the body to heal itself of the same symptoms it causes at normal doses. As previously stated, like cures like is the basic tenet of homeopathy. One thing that I do want to leave you with about homeopathy is that it is its own discipline of medicine. And Although some people out there may say it's completely harmless, it actually is not completely harmless. So anything with as much power to heal has as much power to harm. So it is recommended that you work with a trained homeopath. It is absolutely recommended that you work with a trained homeopath. I am not a homeopath. I am not trained in homeopathy. So I am not going to be the one to help you, but you can go to AHVMA, uh, the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association, and start your search there. You can also go to Vital Animal. I think it's vitalanimal.com. That's Dr. Will Falconer. He has some really great resources on finding a homeopathic veterinarian, um, whether that is local to you or not. So they're they're few and far between. They're, they're not as prolific as traditional medicine veterinarians. So you may be looking for someone to do telehealth with, and that is okay because the way homeopathy works, they, it works on symptoms. So you, if, as long as you can adequately explain symptoms to your homeopath, they can help you. Um, but I would say absolutely work with a trained homeopath. Uh, I, I certainly would never recommend any remedies for anyone or their pets because I'm not a trained homeopath, but I wanted to give you an understanding that this exists right? And if you feel like you're at the end of your rope, you are not. There is something else out there. There are other things out there that you can do and you can try. And I would highly recommend seeking out, if you haven't already a holistic veterinarian, please do that. Um, but also a homeopathic veterinarian, especially if you feel like, you know, there just has, there just has to be more out there. There is, there is. So I hope that explanation was helpful. Um, if you have never heard of homeopathy, I hope that explains it better. <laughs> I hope it explains it enough that you now understand what a homeopathy is and why it, it can be so incredibly powerful and useful for you and your pets. Um, if you have heard of homeopathy and you just didn't understand it, I hope you have a better understanding of it now. Um, yeah. So reach out to me and let me know if you have any other questions about it. I am hopeful to have, uh, more experts in homeopathy on the podcast soon, which is why I wanted to give you an introduction to it, give you an overview of it. So you have that baseline knowledge going in. With that, I'm going to go ahead and end today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already rated the podcast, uh, wherever you get your podcasts, I hope you do so. That's the best way to make sure that this podcast reaches more people, reaches more pet parents, because that's the goal, right, is to help more pets by helping more pet parents. So uh, rate the podcast wherever you are listening to it. I hope you're already following the podcast. If not, go ahead and click that follow button. Thank you so much for being here. Until next week. Bye, guys. Oh, oh, oh.